There was this person named Noah, and he had a big family. And he lived at a time, this is just a story, it's like a myth. In the past, I've asked, if you squeeze a lemon, what's coming out? The answer, whatever's on the inside. And sometimes it takes a long time to reveal what's on the inside. Out of the abundance of the heart, what the mouth speaks. What comes out of you is because of what's in you. And when you watch this video of this older lady who says some absolutely ignorant things, it just simply reveals that she has always been this foolish, but now she has the freedom to say something so silly and in a church, no less. So let's just look at this. Story about Noah's Ark. You ever heard of Noah's Ark? No? Well, let me tell you. Now, I guess she's having story time. There's some older people there, and there's some children there also. And again, this is in a church, and I say church loosely. I mean in a church building, what looks like, what 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 carries the idea of what a church is, a church building, a church-ish looking building in front of these children. Notice the, the rainbow attire, and that's the reason for her having that. There was this person named Noah, and he had a big family. And he lived at a time, this is just a story, it's like a myth. He it's a story, it's like a myth. Why are you in the church? Why are you even in the building to begin with? He lived at a time when people all around his family were doing mean things. Mean, mean things. And so God was mad at all the mean things. So... I didn't really think that God had a sense of outrage, but apparently she does. Okay, two things. First of all, this this foolish lady, and she earns the title foolish, says that she does. Apparently she does. Okay, you were blasphemous, foolish woman. Secondly, you didn't think that God had any outrage. Well, can I just break some news to you? Lady, if you do not repent, you're going to find out exactly how much rage, how much outrage he has, how much anger that he's going to show towards those who would, especially someone like you, who's just mocking him and also mocking him in front of the children. Jesus himself said, now, I don't know if you believe in Jesus, if you believe he's a myth also, but Jesus, the person you might probably think is a myth, said that if you stop one of these little ones from coming to him, and if you cause one to stumble, it would be better for a millstone, even an old millstone be hung around your older neck. I know I'm being mean, but even a four millstone be hung around, it's better for that to happen than you be tossed into the sea. The, you should not grow this old and then all of a sudden revert, revert back to childlike foolishness, but that's what she's done. So in a fit of rage, God said, Noah, now, now listen to what she said. In a fit of rage, God says no. A, a fit of rage. Okay. I'm going to cause a big flood, and we're going to get rid of everything and start over again. But I want you to build a very, very, very big boat, an ark. And in that ark, you are going to put two of every animal. And the waters began to come down. And it rained and rained and rained and rained. And you know, here's the thing. When God saw all of that mess, all of those beautiful things and people that had been destroyed by the water, well, God kind of rejects. What's the word I'm looking for? What is the word you're looking for? I know it's going to be a blasphemous word, but what is the word that you're looking for? Regret. Regret. There's the word. That no, wrong. God did, God did not regret. Now, there is some issue with the way that some of the English translations would have it, uh, but it just meant that, he, that there was sorrow for what happened. It's almost like when you, when you have an issue with a child. You can, you can spank a child. You can discipline a child. Uh, you knew what was going to happen. You did it. And you were sorrowful for doing it doesn't mean that you that you regret doing it or doesn't mean that you wouldn't do it again. You did it for a particular reason. Uh, and so in this case, God was not um, so traumatized and regretful of what he what he did. He would do it again because he's a he's a righteous and just God. God regretted that. And so God said to Noah and his family, I'm never going to do that again. Even when people do bad things. 
I'm going to find a way to love them anyway. <laughs> Even when they do bad things, I'm going to find a way to love them. I'm going to... I could just see God. Doggone, I'm just going to dig real, de dig down real deep to find something inside me just to love them anyway. Because I didn't like what I did the last time. I regret it so much. So I was probably wrong for that. And you know how you can tell that I'm never going to do that again? I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. This is clearly her favorite part of the story. Clearly her favorite part of the story this old foolish lady who likes rainbows, who likes supporting rainbows. And of course, she's got a little pride flag on. Of course, she's going to make a mention of that as in a second. And every time you see that rainbow, you'll know I'll never do that bad thing again. I love you always. That's why I love rainbows. That's one of the reasons. Happy pride. Happy Pride, what a, okay. So I guess this was during Pride Month. Uh, the sad part is you're going to distort the rainbow for these kids, because I'm pretty sure there's a generation of kids who think that when they see this rainbow, that they think of pride. They have misunderstood what God's um, promise is to not destroy the earth. They misunderstood that. They don't even think about God ever having enough anger to want to destroy the earth, to destroy the earth. They don't think that. That's out of their mind. So therefore, they think that there's no consequences to doing right or wrong. As a matter of fact, there is no wrong, uh, just only what you feel. Everything, every, however you feel, there's a there's a thin line between, well, I was going to say a thin line between sin and your feelings, but I guess in their world, there is no sin. And so this, obviously, this is, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous, but but she called it, she called it a myth. You know why this is not a myth? I know it, it it's, it's, it's hard to imagine, you know, seeing this this sort of a flood, this epic flood. Now, I don't know why anything is hard to imagine after what we've seen over the last 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, things have just happened in such a way that like nothing should, should, should surprise you. But you know why that you, you should never have an issue with believing any of what the Bible said? Take everything that you think that might be a bit questionable. If a person is having some issues understanding, believing, believing the the flood, believing the, the Red Sea crossing, believing Jesus walking on water, which I don't understand why that's a problem. If he created the earth and the water that he walked on, why couldn't he? But find all these different things, fire coming from heaven or the earth standing, or the, yeah, the earth standing still. How, that doesn't make any sense to the, to the average person. However, set that to the side. Set it to the side thinking those are the things that are inside the book. Inside this book, there are some other things that also seem pretty incredible. But these pretty incredible things, we can we can know for a fact. Those are these prophecies that's been given. And so because we've got all of these different prophecies that's been given and not one has failed and all of them have come true exactly like they've been told, except for those regarding his second coming, because it just hasn't happened yet. But everything else though, we can sit and say, wow, that's amazing. And so for these people who... I was going to say these people who who, who want to lean on science, they really don't because they don't lean on science when it comes to a baby being a person. They don't lean on science when it comes to uh, the difference between male and female, between genders and sex. They don't rely on science. But ask that person or the reason why you would think that or know that this stuff is true is because these particular prophecies have come true. And just logically speaking, mathematically speaking, what's the probability of one or two or three or in this case, hundreds of prophecies coming true and coming true exactly right. What's the likelihood? But they have. And so these prophecies are found where? It's not that they're like they're found all over the world. They're in they're contained in this book. What else is contained in, the, in this book? Everything that you might want to disagree with. And because they're in the same book, because these are true, oh by the way, everything that we have that, that, that we've been given that we can verify historically, that's been proven. Nothing in the Bible has been disproven archaeologically. So because we got that along with the prophecies, those are in the same book as the other things that a person might have a problem with understanding. Because they're in that same book, logic dictates that I need to also agree with that. And so to call that myth would be to just go ahead and turn a blind eye, to turn off logic, turn off reason, and reject everything. But here's the reason why. It's not because they're difficult to understand. That's not the reason why she rejects it. She rejects it because 
it would cause her if she if she had to acknowledge that it's true. And I, I, something in my mind just makes me think that she knows something in that Bible is true. But if she were to acknowledge that, she would have to live by it. She didn't want to. I would rather, at my late age, I want to have some fun. I want to, I want to just let go of all my inhibitions. I want to live the way I want. I want to be my own Lord. And for however many years she has left, she's free to do so. However, there's going to come a cost. The Bible says it's appointed unto man and women, young and old, wants to die and then the judgment. So what is she going to face? She is ultimately going to face the judgment. Amen. <laughs>